Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Risk Media Broker Webinar Series. I'm Sherry Johnson. We have an exceptional panel today for you. I'm so excited. Uh, we are going to be talking about how to increase your brokerage business in a virtual world. I've got some of the best minds in real estate on the show today and the webinar, and we are just thrilled to have them. Before I introduce them, though, please know that if you have a question today, uh, we'd like you to put those into the question section over on the uh, control panel so that I can see those questions. In the meantime, while folks are getting on, I would love to see where you're calling in from, where you're uh, located. If you could just uh, put your name and say, you know, go into the, the question section and leave us a, you know, shout out from each of your towns. That would be awesome. Then we just see who's here and uh, we'll start here in a moment. So again, this is being recorded. RIS Media will be sending out a, uh, a link to the playback of this broadcast. So we are recording this. We also have a great sponsor today who's got um, a really great giveaway that will be announced at the end, uh, as well as, uh, as some free coaching that we'll give you um, from Sherry Johnson Coaching. So welcome again. I'm Sherry Johnson. I'm the moderator of today's RIS Media Broker Webinar Series, and I'm going to get started, and I see uh, we've got some great folks chiming in here in our chat room, so keep that coming, and let me first start uh, by saying, again, we have um, a very great lineup today. We're going to hear some exceptional ideas for how to grow your brokerage business. A lot of questions today about uh, virtual environment. Are we staying hybrid? Are we going in person? Are we doing both? And ultimately, in, in what I love to hear about are all of the things that are staying as a general new practice that you're going to hear about um, from these fine uh, folks today. Um, if you are new to RIS Media, I just like to comment on what a great organization uh, RIS Media is, the leader in uh, really the most trusted news in real estate for over 40 years. Uh, this is an industry um, literally the the finest quality editorial and information about brokerage sales everything you need to know uh, so check us out check them out and go check out the daily news if you haven't done that uh, i suggest uh, go to their website and you can subscribe again i'm sherry johnson i'm a national speaker coach consultant uh, i've been a licensed uh, real estate broker for over 25 years i was an agent uh, an executive with a large company in cleveland and I've had uh, Sherry Johnson coaching for about four years now. And our sponsor today, uh, Dan Igo from the Calibri Real Estate uh, Group. And Dan uh, is going to introduce himself in a few moments and, and uh, tell us about uh, your company. Hi, Dan. Thanks for being here. Hi, Sherry. Yeah, I'm excited Great to be to here. Have. Thanks. Thanks for sponsoring this. We're thrilled. We love it. So Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Sarah Richardson from True Realty in Scottsdale, Arizona. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Thank you for having me. And Dan, thank Welcome. you for sponsoring this. You yeah, bet. we're thrilled to be, have you here. We're thrilled to have you here. And from Birmingham, Alabama, uh, my good friend Earl Mooring from Realty South. Hi, Earl. Hey, Sherry. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to this. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, uh, Calibri is our sponsor today, and I've asked Dan to share with us, you know, what is Calibri Real Estate and tell us all of the wonderful brands that you have within your company and the great value that you bring to the real estate industry. Yeah, thanks, Sherry, and uh, thanks, Earl and Sarah. I'm super excited uh, to, to be part of this today, and I've gotten to hear uh, all, all Sherry, Earl, and Sarah's stories around technology and in the real estate industry. and. They've got some fantastic uh, stuff to share. Uh, I'm I'm super excited to be part of this, and and actually, you guys are getting the first peek at at our national brand. Uh, I, I think a lot of people uh, know our schools, which you'll see here in a, in a, in a then on the next slide. Um, but we we're now launching Calibri Real Estate, uh, and we're a family of 17 brands across real estate, home inspection, appraisal, property management, and, and we operate from uh, Miami, Florida, all the way to Seattle, Washington, and uh, North Carolina to, to um, Southern California and Arizona. So I'm sure you're probably familiar with some of our brands there on the left, 
I'm coming to you today actually live from uh, Hondros College in Ohio, uh, which is the market leading school here in Ohio. Um, and actually there's training going on right outside of my door. So excited to be a part of it and excited to, to, to be able to sponsor this event today. So uh, how do we partner with brokers? I just want to take a quick minute. You know, we, I, I meet with real estate brokers across the country and, and we, hear, we hear a lot of the same things and a lot of the same um, desires that they need from us as an education provider. And I think one of the things that we really do that's unique is we help our, our uh, brokers out there across the country recruit and retain talent. Uh, we do that by getting them in front of our students that are not affiliated, but looking to start a career in real estate. Uh, we also provide technology solutions um, that can help track the progress of, of real estate students through, the, through their life cycle. Um, and and we're a national, we have a national presence. We're, we're in all 50 states. Uh, we've got Spanish content. Um, and and as, as I'd mentioned before, um, we're really excited about our depth and breadth of offering everything from designations one of the things we're really proud of is our Institute for Luxury Home Marketing, um, but we've got designations and, and essentially we wanna be a partner with, with brokers across the country throughout their employ their entire uh, life cycle, so. It's, it's outstanding actually. And um, we all know McKissick Learning uh, for those of you that get your CE from there as well as Real Estate Express. So Dan, thank you so much. And, and thank you for being our sponsor today. Uh, we look forward to hearing about your um, giveaway for everyone who's listening uh, at the end of the webinar. You bet. Thanks, Sherry. Awesome. So um, I would like for our panelists to just share a little bit, uh, give the audience an idea of where you're from, what kind of uh, markets you have, how the size and scope of your operation, your role, uh, and I'll start. Uh, I'll start with you, Sarah. Okay, well, thank you. Um, my name is Sarah Richardson. I'm the founder and CEO of True Realty. Um, we're an Arizona-based real estate brokerage. Uh, we've been in business 11 years, and we really cover the entire state of Arizona. We've got a little under 150 agents statewide. The majority of our business is in the Phoenix metro area that we do cover almost all MLSs throughout the state of Arizona. Primarily, we're a residential real estate brokerage. We do have a commercial division. Um, we're the second largest wholesaler in the state of Arizona, as well as we have a vacation rental management division. But I'd say still 80% of what we do is residential real estate. We've got a median sales price in-house of 505,000. We're the fifth largest luxury brokerage in the state of Arizona. And we're really known for our training and our mentorship. Oh, nice. I love Scottsdale, and uh, that is such an accomplishment. Not today you wouldn't. <laughs> Just, it's like 100. <laughs> it's probably yeah. It's a sauna there. <laughs> That's yes. for sure. Well, thank you, and and congratulations on your success uh, in thank a very you. short. <laughs> Sounds like you're doing really amazing things there. Um, Earl, please introduce yourself and tell us about sure. Birmingham. Yeah, my name's Earl Mooring. I work for Realty South, and we are based um, in Alabama. Base our corporate headquarters is in Birmingham. We have 23 offices statewide. Um, we've been around since 1955, um, and we were acquired in the early 2000s by Home Services of America. Um, we have about 850 agents um, across our our 23 offices. We're doing about two billion dollars a year in sales. Um, like Sarah's operation, we're primarily uh, residential real estate. Um, our average sales price is a little different than hers. We're around the 300, 325 price point. Um, and we're selling about, as a company, about 9,000 units a year. So that's a little bit about Realty South in Alabama. Fantastic. And um, I don't know if any of us, I, I'm hearing background noise, maybe it's gone now. Um, not sure. It might still be there, but we'll see. Okay, great. So really great uh, different parts of the country, um, which is wonderful, and a lot of a lot of perspective that's coming to all of you listeners because uh, I got to chat with both of you uh, before this call today, and I know a lot of the great uh, takeaways that you're going to get. Um, so we'll jump right in. Um, the first, you know, when you think about the companies you run and all of the infrastructure that goes on to that happens to manage a real estate brokerage of any size um you know 
50 agents. We've got listeners here that have 30 or 50 agents, and we have people that have their running operations that are within you know, 5,000 or more agents uh, within their company. So when you think about what were the high level areas, just like the major areas of the company that increased from conducting business in a virtual world. Uh, Earl, I'll start with you. So, um, you know, we have brokerage, uh, we have title, we have closing, we have mortgage. So um, we're running kind of a, a family of service operation. Um, our uh, closing division uh, really increased dramatically during this virtual world. We were the first in the state to be able to go to a virtual environment with signing and all of that kind of stuff. Um, it really changed the way that we do business. Um, our Realty South U, which is our educational division, um, really upped their game during the pandemic. And you talk about, Sherry, some of the things that are going to stick. Um, those changes in our, in our training programs, going virtual and on go-to meetings like this and Zoom, um, that's here to stay. And that really was a major change for us. And uh, in the brokerage area, the big change for us was um, going to virtual signing. Uh, electronic signing and we took our entire operation um, and in a matter of a couple of weeks went from a traditional paper company to a completely digital paperless company so it was a huge shift that we made we were planning to do that that was in our long-term plan and COVID really accelerated that so I think in our training our closing centers and our brokerage we saw some of the biggest changes Excellent. And I know, you know, it's funny, so many companies uh, that I work with and saw the adoption of online contracts and digital contracts was such pushback from a lot of companies, not all, many companies, that's all they've done. Um, and I admire that. And then all of the, you know, so the company's been around since, it, whatever, they had, uh, you know, they had a hard time. I think we'll hear more from you about this, but you know, that was like ripping the Band-Aid off and saying, okay, we're, we're digital contracts now and we have to be. And so I feel like those people didn't really have a say, <laughs> you know what I mean? They just suddenly, this is how you have to do it, whether you like it or not. So a lot of adoption came, I think, quickly on, on with a lot of companies on online contracts. Sarah, what were the high level uh, areas of your business that you saw have a dramatic increase because of going to a virtual world? Sure, um, well, we had always, as I mentioned, Training has really been the core of our business and training new agents directly out of school. And we had always conducted our training in person or they had an election to do it from home. And so we made our transition to everybody doing their, um, their curriculum based training from home. Um, and we were actually able, once we made that transition into a virtual environment, we were actually able to recruit more agents out of school because they felt safer. So we saw our new agent recruiting statistics increase dramatically. Um, also, we saw a lot more 360 video and adoption of a lot of this new 360 tech happening. And so we adopted software where our agents, we bought the cameras, we trained our agents how to do this and how yeah. to um, conduct those 360 videos um, so that they could give virtual tours to their clients. We saw a huge increase in FaceTime, Skype, Google Meet, Hangouts, WhatsApp, as many virtual showings as our buyers agents could perform as possible. And we saw during the, like the, probably the middle of the pandemic, I'd say 21% of our transactions were buyers with sight unseen properties. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, what a difference. And you know, it's funny because you know, pre-pandemic, um, and I just have us describe for a moment, like, I remember coaching agents to use Zoom to do face-to-face -face negotiations when they couldn't see someone in person because they can read and, and respond to body language better when they were face-to-face. -face. And uh, because, you know, text messaging and email, you just can't find that, you can't see that um, body language that happens when people are either fired up about the sale of their house or nervous about it or whatever. And, you know, just remembering like some of the things we were already doing. I mean, as an industry, we had home tours, we had age, we had buyers purchasing homes out of state sight unseen. 
And I think what happened is I, I just feel like all the agents were like, yeah, we've been doing this for a long time, some more than others. Um, but it's great to hear all of this uh, advancement and especially in the training area, that sounds like it really worked out for you. So describe for us, um, you know, when you think about the growth spurt that happened over the last 18 months and you think about the pre-pandemic, right, and transition, when you when you look at, Earl, like your team and managers having to adopt online, you know, digital contracts because there wasn't a, a slow moving adoption to implement that. It was going to happen in a matter of weeks. Describe like that pre-pandemic and then during the transition there are a lot of companies that are still struggling. And if it, at the end, we're gonna talk about best things and practices that they can do and advice that you can give them to make decisions, to make changes that sometimes people don't like. Was there a lot of pushback on change? <laughs> well, yes, there was a, a, there was a ton, <laughs> a ton of pushback on change. So, um, you know, we, we had talked about uh, going paperless and, we we had pushback. We had pushback at the manager level. We had pushback at the executive level. We had pushback at the agent level, at the office manager and admin staff level. I mean, just across the board, people were just terrified of the change. So what we did, I opened a new office in a municipality in the greater Birmingham area called Homewood. And Homewood was kind of one of these small cafe boutique style, uh, I like to call it the, um, uh, coffee shop kind of environment, a um, bunch of young agents. And we, when we opened that office, we went paperless right from the beginning. We've been open three years. So that was kind of our case study and it worked beautifully. Um, and then we tried to roll it out when, when the pandemic hit, we tried to roll it out in other offices. It was bad. I mean, <laughs> it, you know, we had different generations of agents. They really fought back, you know, they didn't want to do it. So we had to really kind of create this culture shift and it happened because of the pandemic. And we just told them, we said, there's no, there's no option. Um, so we did tons, I mean, tons of training, yeah. online training, one-on-one -on -one training, group training. I mean, we rolled out the red carpet and we got a lot of adoption from that and it worked. Um, but the biggest shift that we saw because of this, Sherry, from a brokerage standpoint was to our bottom line. We had a courier system that ran between all of our offices twice daily. It was delivering contracts, delivering earnest money checks. Mm -hmm. We did away with that um, and we saved that cost. And when we realized and went into this mode of digital uh, contracts and paperwork, in all of our 23 offices, we were duplicating services. So we had an employee that did listings, contracts and closings in all of our branches. And we consolidated that and it allowed us to reduce FTE headcount and the cost savings to the bottom line was absolutely substantial. We have since, because of the increase in business that we've had, we've kind of added back to that. But but not only was it required by the pan, it, it was a smart business decision for us to do. Um, and it worked out, it's worked beautifully. And now adoption is great. Uh, people love it. We are scanning earnest money checks from the office manager's desks in, in each brand. I mean, it's just, it's working great. Um, and, you know, we have re regular issues, but, but I mean, it, on the whole, it, it, it's a home run. Well, it's, it change is messy, but it sounds like it has, you've passed through that and um, having those case study offices where you can test things. And then of course it became uh, necessary for everyone else to, to just jump in the deep end, as I always say. And, you know, the person who can change the most will succeed the most. And sometimes it's, it is hard, but I think um, in the end, uh, leadership, great leadership uh, creates the culture of change and, and implementation, execution, it all it all comes together. So, uh, Sarah, your offices seemed to be uh, already set the stage for a high tech environment. Um, so you probably didn't have a whole lot of change over, or did you have some? We didn't at all. We, you know, what we had was two camps. 
We had the agent that was not going to be afraid to dive in during a global pandemic and just really dig their heels into their business and excel. And then the other agents that kind of sat back and, and were a little bit more nervous. But the ones that really dug their heels in, what we pushed as a leadership team was integrations. Um, so everything in everything that we do is completely virtual and digital. So then we want, went one step further. How can we have our CRM talk to our transaction management? How can we have our transaction management talk to our um, inspection companies, our home warranty vendors, our title and escrow partners? So with a hit of a button, an agent can open escrow, an agent can file everything immediately from their CRM. So we really worked on our tech adoption. You know, I have this theory that, you know, the median age of a realtor is in what mid fifties, you, you can research there's all different kinds of answers you'll get, but I'll just say mid fifties. And on average, a realtor has 15 different technologies that they log into on a daily basis. And then we wonder why we have adoption rate problems. It's too much. It's way too much. So, you know, the ones that dug their heels in and really worked, they collaborated with us from a leadership perspective. And we really helped integrate and take time away from them. So as we kind of started this, let's just set it and forget it theory. Um, so the technology works for us on the back end and we can have more time with our clients and our friends and our family. And, you know, it's like, um... You think about all the paperless, we've been talking about paperless for years. I mean, over 15, even 20 years ago. And just the advancement that the industry made because of this pandemic and the, the transaction management systems are now firing you know, at full speed and uh, life is easier for an agent, less paperwork, less room for margin of error. I mean, the list goes on and on when you think about all the hands that have to touch a file before it, it closes. And so um, really all of this happening, I think really catapulted our industry into really the 20, you know, 2021 um, and beyond. So Jerry, uh, I just, Jerry, if I could, I just wanted to jump on one thing that, that Earl said that I think kind of stood, stood out to me and that that this virtual environment is here to stay. Uh, from an education provider, like we we're extremely proud of how we were able to pivot call and audible in, during COVID. And, and we talked to the regulators and to be able to launch our education remotely. Um, and we took it a step further. We, we now live stream classes in 17 states uh, and we're gonna be live streaming in 30 states for pre-licensing, post-licensing uh, by the end of this year. So. I think that it is here to stay, and, and that's that's also what we're hearing from the regulators. So that's great, that's awesome. and it, and you know the convenience factor. I remember, you know, I was teaching agents how to do a virtual home buyer and home seller seminars, and in that in the last you know eighteen months, going virtual and how to attract new leads and, and listings. And I remember in two thousand twelve, two thousand ten, and two thousand twelve, we would hold these these events at our offices and we would get 20 to 30 people or whatever and people would register and they would say hey I just registered for that home buyer seminar that home seller seminar are you going to have this online as a webinar and in 2010 and 2011 and 12 I was like no we don't we don't have that yet and I remember talking to our education department uh, and our director there Jackie and saying people are they want this, you know, people wanted that convenience. And I think you're giving uh, Dan both the convenience of being in person or live streaming it. Um, we're giving that option to all of our agents. My next question is really kind of extension of what we just were talking about. And really it's um, in addition to what you've been doing. So we're increasing productivity, expansion, growth, recruiting opportunities. Uh, many companies were able to, uh, you know, acquire other brokerages during the pandemic in a virtual world. Um, what else do you think um, happened in your businesses, uh, Earl and Sarah, that you would expand on that you haven't already covered uh, before we go into, you know, sales meetings? Are they on hybrid, are they hybrid or um, in person or both? But in addition, you know, Sarah, if you could expand on your education, environment and the onboarding process like how do you do that remotely and is it is it all online is it video is it one-to-one -one with a, a, a coach or a person on zoom how does that look sure absolutely um so from onboarding you know when we have an agent let's say a new agent directly out of calibri that wants to join us 
Um, we'll interview them virtually um, and our business development team will interview them. And then when they're ready to sign on, they will do an orientation with the managing brokers all in a digital Zoom environment. Okay. And then after that, we send them their documents. We create a portal for them in our transaction management software where we send them all of their onboarding documents. Then they have another video where they go through how to do the onboarding docs with the managing broker team. And then ultimately those are filed in their filing system within the transaction management platform. So they can onboard and they can interview with us anywhere they want in the world. That's really awesome. And again, it's cloud-based. So all my docs mm -hmm. are right there. After I Correct. onboard, I can see everything that is available in my sort of back-end office, remote office, mm -hmm. really what I'm using that whole platform for. Is that set up, um, did you create an intranet site or do you have, what, what suite are you using for that? So we're using something called Brokerman. Um, they're, they're based in San Diego, California. Um, they are transaction management as well as onboarding, as well as back office. So they cover the entire gamut for brokerage. Um, so we use their entire um, host of um, offering. And then when an agent is signed on and they're onboarded, they have a list of of different technologies that they have to train on, their CRM, you know, um, all of our different lead programs, back at you media we use for social media. And basically they have a whole entire onboarding quick start program for their technology. And then what they're required to do is go through a three week curriculum with our coaches and our mentors. Um, we all provide that Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Wow. And uh, Zoom environment. yeah, great. And, you know, I think, um, we are, we are seeing the benefits of video, like it's just so astounding to me how, how we didn't do this before. I mean, you really think about it. We had all this stuff before and now it's like normal. So um, Earl, I wanted to ask you uh, specifically, your sales meetings uh, have gone to, how have you kept the momentum? How do you keep people engaged? This is really both for both of you. Um, how do you feel about uh, virtual versus in person or are you doing a hybrid mix? Where, here's, here's, here's what I thought was going to happen, right? Uh, when we went into lockdown, um, I we, we went to everything virtual, including our sales meetings. And I thought, well, these will be here till, you know, we we're done with this, right? And when we kind of got done with this and we started doing some in-office sales meetings again, um, people didn't come. And I was really, was really kind of taken aback. And so I started talking kind of one-on-one -on -one to, um, I, I like to call them the thought leaders in my branches, right? The influencers kind of reached out, what's going on? And they said, oh, we love to hear what you have to say, but we've learned we like to do it in our pajamas and we don't want to put on our makeup and we don't want to dress <laughs> and drive 35 minutes to come to the office. So basically the message I got from my agents was, we want Zoom here to stay. So we are continuing to do Zoom and we have a segment of our population that really wants to come into the office. So I have now moved to a hybrid model. Got a camera behind me, got a camera in front of me, got the big monitor, got the lapel mic, um, and I can broadcast to six offices. Um, and have interaction and communication with people and six agents in six different offices. Yeah. Um, and they can chat with us and raise their hand and ask questions. And so that's where we are right now is a hybrid mix, um, leaning more toward Zoom than in office. And that really took me by surprise. I, I didn't think that was gonna happen, but but it has, and it's good. Yeah, I think because of the time saving factor, that has been a big, uh, it, it's just, if I don't have, if I'm showing a house after the meeting and it's out this way, why am I dry? You know, it just for time, I think people are really seeing that as a, as a total time saving, adding another hour of their, you know, back to their day. Um, how are Sarah? How are the sales meetings that you do? Are they, are they all virtual? Do people come into the office? Do you have both. Describe them. We 
we meet every Monday as a brokerage and they were both. They We had the hybrid model for years okay. um, and moved 100% to virtual and with our expansion plans into other states in order to incorporate those folks in other states, we're gonna keep it 100% virtual. Um, and we found that we still get the same amount of collaboration. And one thing that we've done to increase the adoption, increase the attendance is um, send out text messages internally to the entire team letting them know what the topic is leaving slide aisles with them friday afternoon to let them know what the topic is and then ultimately it's in our slack app our communication app so we try to hit them in three ways um, and that's really helped our attendance increase but i agree with you that it's a huge time saver and it's a great way to create culture and to get people connected that are all over the state for us because they can they're creating referral partnerships and they're creating bonds, you know, our North Arizona people and our South Arizona people are getting to know our Phoenix people and they're, they had always been the hub. So it's really actually helping us get closer, um, which is so counterintuitive to say, or to feel really. That's a really well said um, statement. I mean, I'm writing down culture, connection, referrals. There was a time when the only place, I mean, I had 13 offices and some of my agents, never they did deals together and they never met you know they they were in offices mm -hmm. that were 40 minutes away from each other and the only time they would meet would be at a company event once a year mm -hmm. or something like that um and now they're connecting like we've never connected before in a closer way sounds completely counterintuitive but it is making total sense i love how you said that sarah thank you um would you both expand on okay so I heard you say Slack, actually, uh, Sarah. So, and I, I use Slack and, and the broker I'm affiliated with, we have Slack, we have about 650 agents. And I can tell you that the difference in the 90% uh, the less emails that I have gone from uh, in the old days of email city, emails, emails to a Slack environment. I just want you, since we're talking about technology and ways to be in this, uh, in, new environment that's not even new anymore tell everyone why you use slack and in a nutshell sort of what it does and why they should check it out it's a productivity app and a communication app so tell us about that yes well i agree with you i am um, i have an in-house newsletter and about four years ago i was at about 3500 emails a day in my inbox and people were getting this is when i was the designated broker still um, and I was there to service my agents. Um, thankfully, now I have somebody helping, a few brokers helping me with that. But, you know, when you can't get to the people that you're servicing because you're just missing emails, it's scary. And, uh, you know, I really would pride myself on the level of service to agents. So I needed a solution. And so I um, was looking for chat apps, all different kinds of things, and came across Slack. And Slack is the hub of all of our communication. It's where we announce our meeting agenda. Um, we have all different channels that you can subscribe to. So a channel, one is about buyer leads, one is about seller leads, one's about Monday meeting, one is a broker corner where we have a managing broker always watching that channel in case somebody has a quick question. We can promote our open houses, we can promote our referral partners, all in these different channels within the Slack app. And what's even cooler about that is everybody can see the conversation happening within the brokerage community. So it, it promotes better um, community and it promotes better um, ways of connecting with agents when you can see conversations happening right before your eyes. It's not closed, it's open. It creates a less siloed environment. And then if you do wanna have that private chat, you can still private chat with your other agents or your other brokers within the system. I'm a huge component of Slack, I absolutely love it. I, I gotta tell you, I, I was overwhelmed by it at first. And then I thought, and I got on maybe three years ago, I started, we, they had it, I just joined them. And I can tell you guys, everyone listening, you have to use this. It, it To me, the different channels by topic make it so much easier to communicate. And now mm -hmm. you wanna promote a new listing, you go there. If you wanna go look up what's happening in training, you go there. I love the question to the broker, we have the same thing. That's always, I mean, they get a response in less than 30 seconds. And when you said, when you said, uh, you know, everyone can see the conversation, which is total transparency, which is what people want. It's collaboration, which is what people thrive in. And 
that really that I get zero emails from our brokerage. I mean, it's like one a week and it, it, it used to be several hundred. Yeah, you know, I have a new listing, I have a buy. And now it's like everything has a channel and it's, it is, it's like freedom. I, I don't know how to explain it other than Sarah just did a great job. But what a difference that we have one for accounting, a question about a check, or if you have a question about your bill online, um, we have one for, you know, licensing requirements. So every single thing, and, I, and I'm sure you're just set up the same way, but I love that you just mentioned Slack. And I think if you're listening and you're like, the, like you just said, the amount of emails and how many emails go out and everyone in the organization just is operating at a much higher efficiency level because you're not email bombarded, you know, and you're not mm -hmm. sifting through all these emails. Um, so thank you for expanding on that. I think that was really uh, a fantastic extra gem that we just got <laughs> um, because I saw Earl shaking his head to it. I think you're going to try it, actually, I can tell. Hey, man, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, oh, sorry, Earl. I just want to say we may be getting rid of it. Um, you know, I'm already starting. I'm thinking Facebook Workplace may need to be okay. the, name, the next because it's got a little bit more features and everybody's already on Facebook and it promotes um, a little bit more social media adoption. So okay. we may be moving off Slack. That's that's definitely an internal conversation we're having. So I just want to put that up. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yes, yeah, it's, it's always sure. good. You know, it's you're yeah. on the edge of the technology. Earl, that that you led me right into what I was going to ask Earl. Earl, you're still still using Facebook groups as a way to motivate, inspire, hold your agents accountable. Can you tell everybody about your um your uh, Facebook group that's really a sales driver and a listing and production driver. I love it. I'm, I'm actually in the group, but if you could tell everybody how you do that and how you set it up, it's fantastic. Yeah. So I, you know, like, like y'all's conversation has just been email is just overwhelming these days. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails that our agents are getting out in the field. They're not, they're not reading what we're putting in there. They're not reading the messages that we send to them. Um, so I have started doing it two ways. We'll, we'll do some of the text like you're talking about, Sarah. We're not doing slide aisle to them, but I will send an email and I will also put a message in the private Facebook group. And it, uh, today I put something in about realtor safety, right? Um, and we had a, a scare at one of our branches on the other side of the state. Um, so I shared that, but like Sherry said, I try to make everything about sales and I try to drive everything toward how you can sell a house. Um, my slogan is y'all go sell some houses, right? So I want everything to be about them selling some houses and we include statistics, add a boys, add a girls. It is a conversation piece and it is, uh, it, it's a great uplifting area for the agents to go and for them to see the information and communicate with each other. They also have uh, group me accounts and, you know, that kind of stuff where they talk to each other and, and that's more agent to agent as opposed to broker to agent. But um, uh, there are, there are lots of tools they're using. Yeah. And I think, you know, what's great that I see in there is you're recognizing agents. Um, of course, they're not going to do that themselves. So you're doing that for them right. as the, as the broker. Um, you're also, like they have a sense of, I just got a listing. I went on an appointment. I'm you know, taking pictures of um, yard signs that they, you know, pulled out of a for sale by owner and now have their sign in the yard. Like, I feel like it's, it is a conversation. It's ongoing and it's like you're with them while they're doing their business. And I think that That's that right. life yeah. took on a life of its own because, because of your leadership, you know, as a leader, those of you listening, you know, people in your offices will mirror what you do and you set the tone and the pace. And I often say the speed of the leader determines the rate of the pack. You know, you're the leader, the pack is, are your sales agents and the Facebook private Facebook page can be a sales driver big time and, and um, announcement, you know, whether the agents use it to communicate their new listings or they communicate that they went and made appointments. I think all of it, success breeds more success and people just it starts to continue like oh you know Susie got an appointment because I just saw it on Facebook I'm gonna go make calls and so that that has taken a life of its own I watched it uh, from the inception right. putting that together it's awesome it's awesome so you know I always ask I like to ask I got this from John Featherston I, I like to ask people who's uh the founder and, and CEO of, of RIS Media and 
I like to ask people like the two of you, if I'm out in the audience and I'm listening to the two of you and I want to, uh, I want to make um, some changes and I, and I don't know which ones to make first, right? I, I would like you to share with the audience something that they should stop doing and then something they should start doing. Okay, and uh, Sarah, I'll have you go first. Okay, um, and from a broker owner perspective, I think is probably what you're asking, right? Yes, from a broker um, perspective and relative to the topic we're talking about, which is, you know, really expanding your business and increasing your brokerage business, whether it's for recruiting, education, uh, sales, support to your staff, technology for your back end to the, you know, online contracts and, and platforms that help us manage all those transactions from any of those areas in a virtual world, really, what can they stop? What should they stop doing and what should they start doing to advance their, their business growth? Sure. Um, one thing I think that everyone should start doing is really leveraging backend technologies. I mean, what we can do with our CRM and our transaction management that pushes into our financing software can be done with the push of a button. We've got three, not including myself, so I'd be the fourth. We have four full-time people operating almost 150 agents because of software. This adds to your bottom line. This is a way to leverage software so that you can be more profitable. We see, we're seeing commissions decreasing. We're seeing commission compression happening. So in order to watch your bottom line, in order to make sure you're poised for your future, looking at some of these back end systems is really gonna help position you for the future. Um, and so that's something I think all broker owners need to look at now. Things to stop doing, be afraid of change. There are so many awesome, I mean, I am like blown away at some of these amazing software companies that are coming out. I'm like, for me, I'm almost like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna try this, oh my gosh. And my team's like, stop, stop. You know, <laughs> just, we don't need to adopt a new technology where we kind of, you know, are a little trigger happy, almost too trigger happy. We're too forward thinking in some ways I need reins on me as a leader, um, where some people I think could be afraid, too afraid of change, where, you, you know, you don't want to be left on the wayside and you want to make sure that you can give the same level of service to your agents and the consumer because there's technology out there for both of them. Outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Earl. So uh, the virtual world's great, um, but this business, even if we're doing it in the virtual world, is still all about relationships. And it's relationships now connecting virtually as opposed to doing it face-to-face. -face. Um, the things that I would say that we start doing, I had a business coach when I was an agent and he taught me this. He said, wake up every morning and focus simply on what makes money. And I think that's the driver. And we're a not non we are not a nonprofit, right? And I think what we've got to do is figure out each morning what we are going to do to drive money to if we're an agent to drive money to us as an agent, if we're a brokerage to drive money to us as a brokerage. So that's what I would say. Focus, focus on that. And the thing that we need to stop doing is participating in the noise. There is more noise in real estate than any other industry that I have ever worked in. We got this new thing and this shiny object and it's just squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. You know, and we're going and looking at all these different things, right? And we're taking our eye off the ball. We are in the business of selling houses. Yes, we need systems and yes, we need this and yes, we need that. But Cut out the noise, focus on the money, and you'll be good. It's so true. We are so, I think because it's such a huge billion, billion dollar, you know, industry, we get attacked by people who think, hey, look, the adoption rate for realtors is so low, we could fix that. And so some of those are really great technologies, and some of them are, I call them distractors, disruptors. They're supposed to be disruptors. They're really distractors, Earl, like you just said. And the blinders on and top line revenue solves everything. You know, whether you're coaching your agents up to do more uh, and, and get more market share and increase the top line revenue of company dollar, or you're recruiting new people, right. brand new people or experienced agents. So I think those are great suggestions uh, from both of you.
Is there anything else uh, that you'd like to comment on about the the topic that we've had today? Or 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 Dan, if you want to chime in on anything. I think uh, you know it's so great when when we share these ideas. You know, we all come out. We we bring some ideas and we we learn twice as much as we brought. And um, I think I don't see any questions from the audience. Although I do have one question for Sarah uh, from Bill Bissett. Is Sarah also doing TV commercial spots in Arizona? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> I am on every eight seconds over 40 different channels. It's a flooring commercial. <laughs> it is my best friend's husband's company. Oh, funny. And he asked me to be in his commercials, but did not tell me how much I was going to be broadcasted. Oh gosh. So people, I get literally a tech, probably 10 to 15 text messages a day. Like, I just lost a thousand dollar bet to my wife that you're on TV. That's like, yes, so I'm on TV. This is like a that's such a great trivia fact. You are, and yes. I thought they were going to be real estate commercials. This is yeah, great. Yeah, well, I'm actually working on a deal so we can co-brand True Realty with okay. the flooring commercial. So thanks for the question. Yeah, I do have some real, some other questions that have to do with what we just talked about. Um, so here's the first one. How long did the change to entirely digital transactions take for your two brokerages? Wants to go well, I'll answer that fast because I know Earl's got a long answer for that. I started digital. I've been digital for 11 years, so I didn't have any kind of issues with that. Got it. I thought that was going to be your answer. I would I would probably say three and a half to four years. And then when the pandemic hit, was it weeks? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you know, when, when that happened, we, we gave... I mean, our offices were locked down. I mean, we didn't have people coming and going out of our offices. Um, in Alabama, we were deemed essential, but you know, we we said we were open for business, but people weren't coming and going. We had to be digital in order to be able to sell houses. Um, so it really upped the game of the adoption rate. You had to do it. Yeah, I agree, and it. I think it did speed up. You know, the adoption rate when I was visiting you guys was slow. People, some offices were like, <laughs> we're never doing that. I had that same thing. I I, I implemented DocuSign, um, and it, we couldn't. You know, it was a slow moving, slow moving. So to answer your question, Rich, or I'm sorry, um, Sarah. Hopefully, we've helped answer that. I think, um, you know, from a training perspective and coaching. People need to hear things seven times, seven different ways. So if you want to get adoption, it's not a one presentation thing. It's it's constant. It's it's teaching to the point of feeling like a broken record, mm -hmm. and getting people to start doing it. You know, have workshops, show mm -hmm. people on the screens, do it in the office, do it online with them. But you know, take take the uh, really take the initiative that you're going to over-educate them and you will get faster adoption and you won't have the, oh, you know, we hate this program because they will know how to use the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I think that's really key. We have another question. Sherry, can I follow up on that? Sure. So I would say in your brokerage, get the adoption from your employees because the employees are the ones that are gonna be communicating with the agents and holding their hand and helping them. And once we had employees that were educated and completely understood the process, the agents adopted quicker. And I would also say find um, influencers in your office and get those influencers from each of these different cliques and groups that exist within branches, get one person to buy in. And that one person is going to say, oh, it works great for me, right? And then you're going to have adoption. So get staff and get influencers, and then that will help the adoption quicker. That was my experience. I think we've, we started to answer Rich's question, which is, which is about getting adoption um, and noticing younger agents grasp and utilize the system much easier and some of the older agents prefer note cards and sticky notes any secrets so um i'm going to go back to my first answer which was hold workshops over educate over over educate seven times seven different ways is how people over 35 retain things and so we have to be showing them 
we can't just say, hey, this is online, it's really great. The, the, the managers and leaders who show people, you, you're gonna close the gap of learning if you show them how to do it. And it's, it's gotta be seven times, seven different ways. You are sick of me saying that, but it really is true. Um, I have uh, Gloria Ramirez asks, um, in California, Department of Real Estate requires brokers to have brick and mortar, yet uh, independents and their agents are working virtually. Most independents and uh, brokers are working independent, are, are working virtually. Do you hear the potential of this changing most independents don't want their home address listed on the department's websites i don't know if that pertains to either of you i'm just going to throw that out there um well i can say you know when it comes to a google my business thing and this is interesting is you know agents want to have their own google my business page this is how they're getting their own ratings but what we had a challenge with is we've got every single agent trying to use one office and putting all these pins around the office. So it's kind of the same thing with the virtual world is, you know, you know, where are we gonna put our addresses? And so Google has done a really good job of giving you a little bit of a radius and you can put your pin now in the, in the street across from where your office is. So at least the consumer can find you or where your place of doing business. And I think ultimately that's why the departments of real estate are doing this. Um, so it just increases the level of professionalism because I think that is has been a challenge and that's probably a whole nother thing that we could talk about another yeah. day. But but really ultimately I think that you know with the virtual offices we you have to have an at least an office address so that we can do ratings and they you know they have a place of business that they can work out even if it is from a virtual environment. Well, I think uh, that's an excellent answer. Earl, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, I think that's an excellent answer, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That up, really. And um, we have an, a couple more questions um, before we get to our awesome giveaway. It's coming up. Stay on, everybody. Um, do either of you layer cold calling over virtual recruitment efforts for new agents? Sarah? Yeah, yes. Uh, we have a click funnel. We've got several um, recruiting landing pages. We, you know, get lists from the school. We're also partnering with Calibri um, for to even sponsor agents to go through schools. And then once um, they come in through one of our, our funnels, um, our landing pages, then um, we call them immediately. The goal is to call them within an hour of us receiving it during business hours and then on nights and weekends within 12. I am not doing it. I am not doing any cold calling. Um, I, I'm a big believer in uh, uh, attraction rather than promotion. And I have found that if the culture in my offices is one of success and happiness and the agents are happy, my agents are going to be the best recruiters that I have. Um, and that is proven to be very true. I also have somewhat of a different belief system on recruiting than most people. I don't like to recruit experienced agents. Experienced agents bring problems into my branch. I like to bring in brand new people, put them through my tra training, teach them our way of doing business, and they, my retention is higher with them um, because I've coached them, I've trained them up, um, I give them leads, I, you know, all that, but I'm not cold calling for agents. Interesting. I think um, great answers, both of you. I, um, I can say that um, I was very effective farming for new agents. So sending out postcards to a geographic farm area that you want agents that are, let's say there's a neighborhood, there's a lot of high turnover in that neighborhood to put a list together to recruit new agents from that neighborhood is like going after listings, but really you're going after the agents and then you teach those agents to list, like Earl just said, and then the next thing you know, you own that market, you can own that neighborhood uh, because you've actually organically hired someone from that neighborhood. I've done it multiple, multiple times. Uh, I teach it to managers all over the country and it, it really is a great way to recruit new agents. Um, and of course, um, you know, get them licensed and get them producing. Um, so great question, Sarah, thank you. And somebody asked, uh, hey, Beth Matthews, uh, Sarah, would you be willing to share the financial software that you funnel broker mint info? We just push into QuickBooks. Okay. We haven't moved into NetSuite or anything yet. I mean, that's something down the road we will be moving to, but we're still pushing into QuickBooks. 
Excellent, thank you. Um, and then Holly, last question, will any of you be sending out or posting somewhere the names of your favorite programs uh, that are used within your brokerages? So here, um, looking to change some of my systems for my office. Great question, Holly. And you know, I would suggest connecting with both Sarah and Earl on LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, and Dan also, and, and, and me, and just uh, connecting and getting, you know, a direct message start. I'm sure uh, they would share that with you. Um, I'm so glad you brought that up, Holly, because there have been a lot of fantastic ideas shared here today. Um, and I can't thank you too enough. Uh, you have been so informative, such amazing technological world. You know, this is like virtual environment, you know, best practices all condensed into this webinar. I'm, I'm just so glad, glad I got to hear it all and all of you got to be a part of this. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, it's been it's been really fantastic. And um, I just want to thank you both. You had fantastic answers. And I know uh, that our viewers um, got a lot of takeaways that they can start thinking about You know those things they said to start doing and stop doing. And sometimes we heard both of you really talk about you know, making it happen. Just, you know, sometimes I, I laugh so often, you know, the fear factor of what are, what will our agents think, you know, and it's like, they will follow you and your confidence. And if you say, this is a great system and here's why it's going to help you save time. It's going to help you make more money. It's going to help you actually work less. Right. And then you can go on more appointments or better yet, you can spend time with your family or the people you want to be with. Okay. So we have to be um, enthusiastic. And I think sometimes the change, that that fear of change is really unnecessary. You can make changes and in your enthusiasm and the way you implement that change will dictate whether it's gonna be successful or not. So uh, again, awesome, awesome webinar. I hope you guys will come back again. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Oh my gosh. You have both just uh, educated everybody so well, and and um, it's time now. We're going to have Dan tell us about the the giveaway that is from Calibri Real Estate. So tell us about what what they get. This is going to be emailed out, by the way. So uh, Dan, tell us about the uh, real estate income guide. I think we we you guys touched a little bit on recruiting, and this is really a tool that that can be used to to help recruit. Um, I mean, the income guide is going to be able to to show you, hey, how much can I expect to make my first year in real estate? What are, you know, what are the uh, specialties where people are making the most money in real estate? You know, what is average real income based on tenure and years in real estate? So I think there's some really good data in here and we're, we're in the process now, Sherry, we're gonna be uh, adding to this next year. We wanna go out and survey more agents and find out why are they choosing the brokerages they're choosing? Why are they leaving those brokerages and going to new brokerages? So it's really our goal as a, as a provider to be able to provide some thought leadership to you and all the real estate broker community um, around you know, uh, you know data that we have access to uh, with the students. And then also um, we're, we're a partner across the country with agents um, recruiting, right? We bring agents in, they present to our students in career fairs. Sarah had mentioned they get access to our student list of unaffiliated students. So we really wanna be an extension to help, help uh, all the brokers out there drive their recruiting efforts. So, yep, the, the, this will be coming to you electronically. A lot of good information and um, looking forward to the next one, Sherry. Excellent. And that is just a lot of value right there. You don't have to create this. It's written for you and you can, I mean, that's something you just start using, right, immediately. So, again, that will be emailed out to you from RIS Media with the playback uh, probably this afternoon or tomorrow at the latest. Um, we are excited. Sherry Johnson Coaching has launched a um, playbook by Sherry Johnson. It's access to an online and live coaching, uh, live Q&A monthly, plus an online access to the Sherry Johnson Academy with uh, courses, with uh, all kinds of courses on how to build a goldmine pipeline, how to make $50,000 at your next open house, and how to uh, you know gain more uh, listings and, and buyers from your sphere. You have access um, if you're a manager and you're looking for content uh, to coach your agents. Go ahead and take the 30-day free trial. You can just click on sherry'sfreeplaybook.com and sign up for your first month is on me. And um, and and I believe our 
next live coaching session is next week. So um, take advantage of that. Again, it's uh, it's live, it's free. Your agents can sign up. Um, if you want to uh, take that to your agents, feel free to, and we'd love to have you. And um, I just want to mention that Risk Media, RIS Media offers a social media solution uh, that is extremely uh, beneficial to agents and brokerages. This is an unbelievably set it and forget it. I think, uh, Sarah, you mentioned this earlier. It's like this system for uh, content, for pushing out editorial content, expert content to uh, four different social media channels every day automatically is so easy. I'd love for you to try this. Uh, you can start your 14 day free trial uh, by going to RIS Media and, and looking for ACE Social. It's awesome. And I always have to talk about it because I just think it's fantastic. We provide it to um, our coaching uh, clients and they love it and they get listings from it and all kinds of lead gen. And lastly, again, I just want to say thank you to Sarah and Earl and Dan. Thank you uh, to Calibri for sponsoring today's uh, broker webinar series. And I really do hope all of you come back because you had a wealth of knowledge today. And we're just so grateful that that you shared it with all of us and with everyone out there listening. So thanks again. Good luck to all of you. And we'll see you on our next on our next webinar together. Thanks Thank so much. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.